All right, guys, thank you for jumping on with us on Sunday afternoon pre-Super Bowl. So the, where this um, topic came about is Katie and I have been talking about how people come on and then it's like they fall off the face of the earth and people just not getting started or doing anything. And we want to make Stop sure screaming. <laughs> we are equipping everyone for the best chance of success for your And part of this also is, sorry, I'm just keeping muting people up. Um, not the, it's the just the nature of this game that not everybody that enrolls with us is going to ever do anything. In fact, um, the statistics are, and this is according to Eric Worre, um, of every hundred distributors in the profession, seventy are categorized as consumers. So they only purchase a product and never recruit a person. Okay? twenty are social enrollers, meaning they recruit one to two people in the lifespan of their business. Okay. Five are in the retailer category, meaning they've recruited three to five people, or they will recruit three to five people. Um, three are considered, and this is of 100 again. So 3% are recruiters. So they recruited six, they will recruit six to nine people in their life. Okay, and so even as if everybody on this call already, kind of you can place yourself so far where you're at. Um, we have an awesome team. <laughs> so two are super recruiters, two out of 100 people in this business, meaning they've recruited, they will recruit 10 or more people in the lifespan of their business. Okay, isn't that crazy? So the nature of this is, again, not everybody's going to do everything, but there are things that we can do to, because since we know such a large majority might only bring you to one or two people, to increase the odds that the, the people get you connected to their first couple of people at a minimum. Cause we can't, some, we can't change people's work ethic and drive and all that. We have no control over that, but it's part of this is just how fast for those of us that are in, you know, in this game for the long haul and developing our skills, how quickly can we get to their people? Cause within four generations of depth, you're going to find a rock star. But if we don't get somebody started right away and connected to their people within that first, you know, 72 hours, the likelihood that you ever get to find that depth in that rock star, is, you know, it significantly decreases. So I wanted to put those, that perspective on those numbers there. Um, so when part of this is leading by example before I kind of get into how we start people. So trying, working and having the goal of getting yourself into that super recruiter category to where you're like, okay, I've, I've, I'm already a super recruiter. I've hit my 10. Okay, that's what you want. Because you want to lead by example 100%. Um, and, you'll, and the more you do that, the more then you'll find your rhythm of getting people started. And, and you can then teach others how to be a more confident recruiter because you've done the same yourself. And all of this, I just had um, a few ladies on this morning. And we all, every, each one has different areas of growth that they're working on. And that's all of us. Even then, to pr right prior to that call, we are on with Seville. And he's talking about sharing with how he's navigating some, you know, significant players that he's been through working depth, kind of going down to somebody that's been in the business for a year, but hasn't, you know, he sees them commenting. So he's like, you know what, I'm just going to, I see they're engaged, but they haven't been on anything. I'm just going to connect. You know, they're one of those really smart people, business, pharmaceutical sales or something, very good in what they do. But sometimes when the really smart people, they overthink things and they network marketing is new. And so they, they struggle here at first. So he just connected with them, kind of painted the vision a little bit of how simple this can be. And they connected him to now this gentleman in Canada who ha has a bunch of hospitals and universities in his connection. And through painting that vision, now this guy, he's, a, he's ready to launch and be significant. And so us being, being on there, I was learning and how he was sharing with us how he was having this conversation. I'm learning new word tracks and Katie's on there like listening like, okay, because the slightest little tweaks in word tracks can totally change the game when you're on the phone with people. And all of that comes with that confidence and continuing to listen to this kind of stuff. Hang on, I'm going to shut my office door. Okay, stop fine. So in part of this too, so the black hole in our profession is when from people enroll and say I'm in to them launching and break started actually starting their business. So, so many people just never do anything. And part of that, so you want to have the mindset too that it's not like, yes, I enrolled them. Yes, they bought a pack. The long, to, to have the long time time and financial freedom here, it, that doesn't, you don't even want to celebrate until they've actually launched and have brought in their first couple of people. 
So it's, that's the first step, of course, is getting the enrollment in. But think of it like this is my new little baby <laughs> that I am going to hold and be attached at the hip with until I see them off and walking on their own. Okay, so, so, so important. And part of this also, and where our conversation came from, is people come in and they're like, they get their first 10 no's and then they want to quit. Or they were, I got to return my pack because I, nobody in my, my network wants to do this. And getting them to understand that, no, that's not how this is going to work. You're going to get a lot of those no's. And we want to set people up for that right expectation. So you need, we need to have a conversation with people managing those expectations. And I'm going to go through some of those points. And I will have this written out for you guys as well. So you don't have to worry about catching it all. But we're going to have to navigate because I'm like, I was, as I'm processing all this, if if we want people to have launched completely first before we have this conversation, or do we have have this conversation and then schedule their launch? And I, I don't think there is a right or wrong answer on that. I think it's going to be a case by case basis, honestly, because some people as they're inviting to their launch might, if they get five no's right away, might crumble. <laughs> and if we would have that conversation to have them expect that they'd have been okay. But some people, if we go through these managing expectations, that will set fear in them right away before they even get you to their launch. So we're just, you're gonna have to do that discernment of how do I think that this person is? Should I, should I walk through these expectations? Do I feel like good? They're, they're a pretty confident person, they're in sales, they know this stuff, and I'm gonna walk through a few of these things. Or am I gonna just know this is a really, really brand new baby and I just wanna get to their people before they think about anything else? <laughs> okay, so part of that then, and I'm gonna share my screen. Minimize. Okay, so many of you have probably seen this already. Um, and honestly, I don't always use it, but when people want, some people are very like type A and want something to follow, that this is really good to send them. Like, welcome, you are a part of our team, and all this talks about is that launch. Okay, and you can tell them it's going to link them to lots of other resources, but we don't want, we want them to make a paycheck their first week because that's going to, you know, they just invested in our company and that's going to get them, um, as they're talking with other people also that confidence and yeah, I made some money my first, my, right, my first week. And you can tell them rest assured, we are going to teach you the skills. You're going to have more mentorship and personal development that you know what to do with here. But in your first week, all we want to do is connect to your top you know, two to five people that you want as running mates and want to do this business with, or that you think, I know somebody that's going to really be like excited about what we're doing here. And that's what this welcome letter says. So you can either have that conversation or send this to them or both. I would, and, and it's so important, like once you get them enrolled, not, and I failed miserably at this early on. Great, because I stopped at the enrollment. I'm like, they're in, sweet. <laughs> And, but no, no, we need to do so much more than that with them. So scheduling that call, you know, within 24 to 48 hours and, or excuse me, 48 to 72 hours. And early on, we made it all about like, you need to have 10 people on this call. You know, it needs to be this. If you can't get 10, we're not, we're going to send you right to the webinar. We're, we're, no, if we, cause it's going to be so much, do so much for their confidence. If we can even get them one team member. So getting, you know what? To bring if you can get five people, two to five people that you reach out to, you share that video with, and they're like, "Huh, I'm interested," or they're entrepreneurial, or the, the most successful people you know. Let's schedule this for it's Tuesday. Let's can if we do Thursday night, does that work for you? Can you just bring those top few people that we can kind of share this information with? And then we'll add you to the Facebook group. Then we'll get we'll start to learn. You'll learn while you earn and take you through the rest of this, okay? That's the most important thing is that we get you get, again, get them launched, even with a few little bit of people to get, get to their network. That being said, the other side of this then is setting the right expectations. Um, so some of those things then are to uh, helping them understand there's gonna be ups and downs. You're gonna have great weeks, you're gonna have weeks that aren't so good. It's just the nature of being in business for yourself, okay? Um, and success or failure is gonna be ultimately up to you. We're here, we're gonna guide you, we're gonna support you, we're gonna train you, um, but we can't do the work for you. So you have to commit to taking what we're gonna teach you and running with it, okay? And our goal is to become, have you become completely independent of us as soon as possible. 
Um, we're gonna, again, we're gonna train you and everything, but that's the duplication of this. You will listen to us doing this and helping you launch your business, and then we want you to be able to do the same in time. And we do that through tell, show, try, and do. So right now you're just gonna, you're gonna be the connection to, to your networks, and we're gonna help share it with your people. And all of this is going to take time though, so commit to being here a year from now. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to tell people. Commit to the process. This is all a growth journey. Everybody's going to have, that's going to look different, but commit to being here. If you, if you think I'm going to give this a try for two weeks, like don't even waste your money because, because there's skill sets that are, you're starting a brand new job. And again, this is if somebody is not, not coming from a previous company, of course. And so some statistics for you guys, and again, I will send this over, um, but that you can, if you have a few of these that you can share with your new team members. So it's, it takes about a year for someone to really become competent in the business, like understanding, you know, let's see the chat. Yes, so uh, Carol, the how do you get the welcome message document? Th since this isn't a strong living thing, this is just for our team, um, this isn't posted in Strong Living, so right now we're gonna have to just sh like save the link to it because it's through a because I just updated it today actually, so it's a live document. So as things evolve, we can continue to tweak it. Um, so you'll just have to I'll, I'll post the the link right now, and then you guys can just save it. Okay, so a, about a year to become competent in this business. And, and I, I feel like that's super accurate. Like I'm coming up on my year anniversary. I feel like I got this now. I know what we're doing here at World. I understand the technology and the company and uh, how to, and now I'm starting to have international conversations and having confidence in that. I think there's really, that's really, really accurate. So it's gonna take about three years then of that consistency for people to be making significant part-time income. We see it moving a lot faster here at World, um, but in general, in the industry, that's what it takes. Again, learning through those skill sets. Um, about five years where you're making like significant income, like this is a nice full-time living for me. And then in seven years, on average, people become what they call world-class. So where you're, because early on, you're working more than you're making money and you're like, wow, my dollar for hour right now is not very good. But after seven years of consistency and personal growth, it's like, wow, I can't make as much, believe I make as much money as I do for the time I put into this. Okay, and you're going to, you're going to be seven years into your career anyway, no matter what. So why not in the evenings kind of be able to build your legacy? And again, this is language you have with um, your new team members. Um, okay, then just work. Top earners in these companies work their butt off. There's just no, no other way to it. Um, if you're going to radically change your financial landscape, like it's obviously going to take work. And commit to personal growth. So a lot of times the people we are when we come into this business are not – Aren't, we are not at a place where we can, you know, lead a, lead a, an organization and lead a team. So we're going to commit to personal growth and learning the skill sets of prospecting and inviting and following up and, you know, building rapport and all that kind of stuff. And then um, just having some of that grit, like to tell them you're going to get a lot of no's, a lot of no's. All of us have gone through hundreds of no's to get to our yeses. Um, and a lot of times it's all about timing for people and they're not saying no to you. They're just saying no to what, the, what you're offering at this moment. There's so many things. It's just a timing thing. So where that's where you just continue to follow up and, and we're going to teach you all about that. But so just have some mental toughness and expect the no's. The, the, the first couple people you think are going to be your business partners might tell you no and just kind of expect that. And it's not, it's not a personal thing at all. So setting that right expectation, and I think it's also very important right away to talk about some income goals. And if you guys aren't comfortable having this conversation right away, that's when bring them to your upline, upline leader, whether you have a team developer that's kind of rocking and rolling or one of us diamonds, um, and we can help have this conversation. And just like with uh, when you're talking to a prospect on a three-way call, you'll start to gain the confidence then to be able to do this with your new team members. But so I remember Seville and Rachel did this alongside Tanya, but she was pretty new at the time as well um, with us. And it's, I believe, 100%. It's because they didn't water down this message. They had this conversation with me that gave me the grit to stick through all that we did in this last year. Because I knew where this was going and I knew they, they stretched my mind to like, wait, this isn't just something where I'm going to spend like $50,000 in a year. Like, this is way bigger than that. And they didn't water that down. So now I'm trying to be better about not watering down the message. 
as well because that's going to help give people that grit and mental toughness also to stick through some of these challenges that we're not, we're not going to, we know we're going to continue to have. Um, and then help tie it to their why. Like why knowing what we have here, understanding about what we're launching globally, like what, what is worth it to you to get you to stick through some of the challenges and a lot of the no's and committing to working after your full-time job and evenings after the kiddos go to bed and you just want to go to sleep yourself. Like what, what, what can this, an opportunity like this do for you and have them really articulate their why? Cause then again, in those moments of the toughness and where it's like, Oh, all I'm getting is no. It's like that they they'll they'll bring it back to those goals and those whys and be like, okay, they did. They told me I was going to get lots of no's. You know, we, we just have to better equip them to expect that because we've lost too many people that get their first week or two of no's and they're just like, peace out. This isn't for me. Okay. And it just it breaks my heart for them, honestly, because of what they're walking away from. Because and then and that's where I feel like if we've done this, if we've set up a call for them to get to their first few people and help launch their business in their first week. We've gone through some of this stuff of what it's, what it takes here. Um, if I've done that and somebody still chooses to walk away, I am so at peace. We have done our job. We've equipped them to, to know what it takes that we're going to continue to pour into them, but not everybody's built to be an entrepreneur. So people are going to leave and not do anything with this. So the other thing, but then I'm going to, we get, I'm going to dialogue. I don't want to just talk at you guys. So from this document, it does link to the, our getting started guide, which is, has so much more information. And initially when we made this, it was, let's give this to them right away and get them added to the Facebook group. But I don't think that that's the best because they can get overwhelmed in strong living. So I wait until we get through the launch call. So they don't even aren't distracted by all the posts and whatnot. And I'll, now I'm going to research and, and figure understand everything before I have my launch call. You don't want them to get distracted. And they, somebody might post something that sends them off in a tangent and a rabbit hole and start questioning things and whatever. Um, and even this document, like there's a lot of good information here, but this is the, then to help them start to learn then after they've launched this first video in here is basically some of the stuff I just talked about. It's going to, in a 50 minutes, go through, here's what to expect and what, to walk them through this guide and equip them to be successful network marketers or start to get them in the right mindset anyway. And then just then walks them through everything else. The only thing that is kind of helpful, I think in the beginning is this, the social part here, because it talks about the social media and in a first part post to get some attention um, and get, start creating curiosity. So you can take that sometimes and I'll just I'll sh copy and paste and send it over to them. If they're like, well, what can I post on my Facebook page? Because we want to make sure they're creating curiosity and not just blasting the opportunity all over it. Okay, so I am going to... Katie, anything that from our conversation that you want to add to that, what we've been talking about? No, that was great. Okay. How do you guys feel? Like, do you, do you feel like that, that will, might help some of my people? Or, okay, I have a better sense for now when somebody enrolls, how I should handle it? or what I should do with them. Cause I, you know, we've been, everybody's been working really hard since we got back from LA and we've had some great three way calls and whatnot. And okay, they're in now what? <laughs> and so I want you guys to go with confidence forward to like, okay, I got an enrollment. Now I know what to do. And part of it, I mean that the confidence in that is going to come as you do more and more of it as well. But so you have that first steps. And part of this, I will also, I have a new enrollment. Now what? I will kind of type out some of these basics. I guess I would say for um, those of you that are bringing someone in, if you're not comfortable, like Leah said, doing this, make sure that you get them to us. Make sure that you do everything in your power to get your new people to us in that first day or two so we can have this conversation. If you're not comfortable doing it, we have to get to them because we don't want to lose them before they even get to start. And part of that, so and why I wanted to go through this with it, we want, just like I said, how we want you to become independent of us as fast as possible. And I know like Julie and Beth and all the three-way calls and as soon as they've said they're in, I'm like, okay, connect us. So I can help do what Katie just said, but I also want you to be a part of that because then at you hear us doing it and now we're creating now, okay, all right, I, I have a new enrollment, I got this kind of thing. So you just hear us do it and that's where you'll get your confidence in it. Mm -hmm. And I know there is some people that just get, weirded out when you try they're like can i get you on the phone my upline <laughs> so try to just like they're great you know i've been working with them for a long time it's super casual it's just because she's done she's helped more people get started than i have and as i'm just we'll just learn together you know just try to 
just makes me crazy when people are like, oh gosh, they won't get on the phone with you. <laughs> but we'll do if if they won't, then we'll just do the best we can, and we'll kind of kind of find the funnel you step by step. Snowblower. All right. Any other thoughts? As you guys have had new people come on board, like what you've experienced, and if you think some of this will be helpful. Oh yeah. Or even for yourself when you got started, like what were the if I would have had this, or I think this that you're talking about would have been helpful or anything. Because you guys are newer, you're enrolled a lot more recently than us, so this, I mean, this isn't perfect either. So as you use this stuff, if you think of anything, we can constantly tweak and improve this getting started process. Well, this, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, this has been really helpful for me, you know, because as you know, I'm an orphan, so I haven't, been properly trained until now. So thank you, Leah. Oh, but I would so like you in, in on this first one so I can see it and then I can do it. Absolutely. All Absolutely. right. And the important thing with the timing, so because of that team developer bonus pool, as soon as somebody is like says I'm in, we want to we want to get them to them right away. And I know sometimes then connecting can be hard because it's like, well, their their time frames and our time frames and whatnot. So important that if you're struggling getting that person to like say, yes, yeah, let's get on within those first 24 hours, just say, this is important because there's some extra bonuses on the table for you in this first week. And since we, you know, we enrolled you last night, I want you to be able to take advantage of that. So if that, if we, if we can, if we can't get on the phone to kind of walk through some of this in this first 24 hours, we should just set that set your, like send them that welcome letter for sure. Then and say, are you comfortable just getting a call set up so we can we can help you you know take advantage of those bonuses because that's that's something we have to kind of navigate when it's like okay we're at day three now they've enrolled and we still haven't talked to them <laughs> but not everybody's gonna also be like yes I want to go on call in my first week so some of this is just gotta navigate case by case. But I, I don't. I just don't want anybody to not know that they have those extra bonuses on the table. Go ahead, Katie. Well, I was just gonna say I think it's a big deal because I think if we get them on the phone with us, one of the biggest things that I always make sure I cover is that when it comes to the social media stuff, you don't want them to like throw up all over their friends and family. And I think for most of us, I know when we got started, you guys, I was making phone calls, I was sending messages, I was sharing all, I literally was throwing up on all my friends and family. And I know a couple of you that are on here probably feel the same way. Um, we just lost so many people because we never created that curiosity of what it was that we were doing and we were sharing our excitement, but not in an appropriate manner. We were just like, oh, you gotta check this out, you gotta get on, you gotta do this. And it wasn't appropriate and the timing probably wasn't right. So I am going back to a lot of my warm market and I am rehashing with a lot of people what's happened in the last nine months. Because when I did it at the beginning, I, I had... <laughs> <It's really laughs> <on fire. laughs> but they also feed off of your excitement. So that's where that one-on-one -on -one conversation is very helpful. Just know that if you, if your people come in, they have the excitement, that's great, but they have to know how to appropriately bundle that excitement into a little quick, I want to get you started, I want to do this right, or I want to share this two-minute video with you, and then get them to your team developer or diamond leaders. Um, because you just, you really can screw it up if you do it the wrong way in the beginning. Or you might have to go back nine months later and be like, okay. <laughs> So I, one thing I'm going to show you in this, again, I'm going to share my screen. So you guys know that this is in here, because I know some of you have dug through this already, but some of you maybe not. So under that Get Social again, I really like this um, as a way of cur creating curiosity. So having our new people just say something like this, and they can take it and make it their personality. But I've just gotten involved with a new technology company. I believe in multiple streams of income. I've never been more excited about my future. If anyone is looking to add additional revenue streams, I'm happy to share. So it doesn't say what we're doing. It doesn't say the helo or anything like that, but it's enough like, huh, yeah, more info, please. Like that kind of thing. It's just creating some curiosity. And so they can post something like that. So they enroll, you've scheduled their launch call for two days later. It can be like, here, here's a post that can just, you know, maybe create some interest in, but take it, make sure we tell them to take it off of the, the Facebook wall. So when people, I've seen a couple of times people are a message, Yes, more info, please. And then there's a dialogue that's happening in the comments, like, yeah, it's called the Hilo, it's a wearable tech. And then, and then now 
Now, everybody reading that, those comments are making their own judgment on if this is something versus continuing to create the curiosity of, oh, great, I'll private message you. So now people are going to be like, well, I want more info too. What is this about? And then you can take it, take it offline. And getting them on the phone if, if possible. That's, oh my gosh, that's so much more beneficial. Because people just, when it's all, so much can be lost in translation through messaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the Facebook Live, is, I feel like we've gotten away from it a lot. I mean, we were doing it, we used to have everybody do a Facebook Live when they first enrolled, sharing the, you know, the vision and sharing kind of what we're doing. But that's in here too. And I think of an effective way of doing it is doing this curiosity post. And then like the day of the launch coming on and just sharing and you don't go through everything, but you just share a little bit And that Katie, I think we could even do more of how you had, who was it again? Denise Sutter. Yep. The two way Facebook yeah. with Maddie. Yeah. Like that's something we can start to explore with too. And to help people that are really nervous about doing that Facebook live kind of doing it together. Okay. Any other thoughts? I'm going to 